What goes into a tire? Raw rubber, of course, both natural and synthetic. Sulfur as a vulcanizing agent. Carbon black, which is collected smoke finer than face powder, yet multiplies a tire's life by many times. More ingredients to speed up some processes and to slow down others. To counteract aging, bacteria, fungus, the effects of sea air, and every enemy of a hard-working tire. All the ingredients, exact in quantity and quality, are fed into a machine called the Banbury Mixer. Hidden electronic controls keep time, temperature, and every other factor within the correct limits. Leaving the Banbury mixer, the rubber batch is passed through a special solution and hung in festoons to dry to prevent it sticking together while it is being stacked and weighed in preparation for the next stage, which is further working up and mastication to ensure even mixing and complete plasticity throughout the batch. Now the batch of rubber is ready to begin its transformation into a tire. Here too, human skill is combined with precise control. These machines force the rubber compound through steel dies, which are the precise shape of the required tread. The tread and sidewall strips are extruded separately and then joined into one. Another important tire building material, the fabric. Nowadays, cotton has been replaced by rayon or nylon, or for certain purposes, even steel. The fabric is dipped in latex solution to provide a better adhesive base for the rubber film. Treating the fabric with rubber compound. This is done in a calendar, a sort of steam heated mangle. It forces the rubber around the threads, forming a complete rubber film over the fabric. Exact thickness is important. A beta ray gauge measures it continuously and corrects it automatically. The machine produces many kinds of rubberized fabric, so colored threads are pressed in for identification. Tire fabric is cut on the bias and the angle of bias is critical for the performance of the tire. The accuracy of this banner cutting machine is electronically controlled. Meanwhile, the third main component is being assembled, the wire bead which keeps the tire on the rim. This prepared steel wire is rubber coated, formed to the shape of a ring, and finished by wrapping with rubberized material. Each Dunlop tire is built individually by a skilled craftsman. First, the tire builder takes a strip of rubberized fabric and starts to lay the foundation of his tire, wrapping it round the cylindrical former. A typical family saloon tire is four-ply. That is, it has four layers of fabric. They are laid individually with their joints overlapping. After the second ply, the wire bead is held in place by turning the edges of the fabric. Now the remaining plies. Uh, 
a final chafer strip at each side to protect the bead. Last of all, the rubber tread and side walls cut exactly to length with tapering ends to give an oblique join. The join is sealed. It will disappear altogether in the balconizing stage and the tread will become one piece. You may not recognize it as a tire at this stage, but it is complete. A perfect job in three minutes. Now the tire has to be molded to the right shape. It has to be cured or vulcanized, and it has to be given its tread pattern. All this is done by one machine, a diaphragm press. The inner surface of the press is a mold, the shape of the finished tire. At the center, inside the tire, is a diaphragm of butyl rubber. As the two halves of the press come together, the diaphragm is inflated with high-pressure steam to force the tire into shape against the mold. Here, too, everything is exactly measured and controlled. The pressure, the vulcanizing temperature, and the curing time. When the instruments show vulcanization is complete, the press separates, the diaphragm deflates, and the finished tire is revealed. Trim off the rubber whiskers left by the molding process, and there you are. Port Dunlop's 10,000 workers produce more than 25,000 tires a day, and every single tire gets individual attention at every stage. But although the tire's made, the process isn't over. Every tire that comes out of Port Dunlop, and there are over 1,000 different sizes and types, is checked at least five times. Expert eyes and fingers seek out the tiniest flaw, and if they find one, the tire is rejected. <laughs>